I keep a lot of hand saws around and a lot of them are specialty saws like coping saws which are for cutting curves and thinner stock and hack saws which are for cutting metal. But when I need to do more general fast cutting without a power tool, I tend to reach for my classic hand saws. I have two of them in particular and many clients and DIYers have asked me why they look so different. When it comes down to it, just one tiny detail actually separates these two saws. But that detail is so fundamental that it ultimately affects their shape, the performance, and even the overall purpose of the tool. Today I'm explaining this much overlooked detail to you and hopefully it'll help you choose the right saw for your future projects. That's coming up next on The Honest Carpenter Show. By the way, I'm finally starting a newsletter this year and it's gonna have all sorts of cool stuff in it, like my thoughts on the modern construction industry, advice for new carpenters and DIYers, and even funny old job site stories. It's all stuff that you can only get in the newsletter, so please be sure to sign up for it on the blog tab of my webpage. I'll link it below. All right, among classic hand saws, there are two dominant kinds, Western saws and Japanese saws. As the name implies, these saws originated in different parts of the world. Western saws are associated with growth in Europe and the Americas, and Japanese saws, of course, were popularized in Japan and surrounding areas. To identify them, Western saws tend to have a D-shaped handle with a tapering back edge and a serrated straight bottom edge of the blade, whereas Japanese saws tend to have a long straight handle with a flared blade and two serrated cutting edges. Aside from the obvious shape differences, though, what really sets these two saws apart? Strangely enough, it all comes down to one thing cutting direction. Western and Japanese saws tend to cut in opposite directions. Western saws are designed to mostly cut on the push stroke. That is, the teeth of the saw really bite in while pushing forward. But Japanese saws are designed to cut on the pull stroke. They remove more material when pulling back towards the operator. And newcomers always want to know, why does this happen? Why wouldn't they both just cut in the same direction? Basically, it all comes down to the orientation of the teeth. Western saws tend to have forward raking teeth, by which I mean their teeth actually lean forward a bit or have a sharper front edge. But Japanese saws have back raking teeth. They lean back towards the operator and have a sharper back edge. Ultimately, any saw is more inclined to cut in the direction that its teeth are leaning. Just look at a circular saw blade. The front edge curves forward sharply with a carbide tip at the end. When the saw blade spins, it slams the carbide teeth into fresh wood, tears it out, and the gullet the hollow space below carries the waste wood away. Naturally, the saw won't cut as well if the blade is installed backwards because the back edge is tapered, sort of like a wave. It's not presenting its sharpest edge to the material this way. Hand saws are very similar. It may be on a tinier scale, but tooth rake, the direction and angle at which the tooth leans or is sharpened, denotes your intended travel direction. And you can feel this when you're cutting. Just try starting a western saw on a piece of wood. If you put the tip to the edge and try to drive forward, it can be difficult. The blade might bounce and jitter. This is because the blade hasn't gotten set into the wood yet, and each tooth is sort of catching on the edge. It's actually easier to pull a couple strokes back first, possibly stabilizing the side of the blade with a fingertip or thumbnail. It won't cut fast this way because it's against the tooth rake, but it'll still produce a shallow notch, which will stabilize the saw. Then when the saw is set, you can really start removing wood by driving forward, utilizing the sharper tooth rake and Japanese saws are opposite. You often set the blade with a few push strokes. Then when it's biting in, you begin pulling more aggressively towards you to remove material. And this tooth orientation is also why the handles are shaped the way that they are. The straight handle of the Japanese saw gives you more control while pulling. You can even grip it with both hands, but the D-shaped handle of the Western saw gives you more palm support while pushing. And this also brings up our second most noticeable difference. The Japanese saw has teeth on both faces, whereas the Western saw does not. So why is that? It's because the dual edges of Japanese saws serve different purposes. Look again closely at the tooth pattern. The teeth on one side are longer and leaning sharply forward. They're actually for ripping or cutting with the grain of the board. Rip cutting is easier overall, so the saw can remove material faster with these big forward raking teeth but the teeth on the other side are a bit shorter and they're not leaning forward as hard. And if you look really close, you'll see that the faces of the teeth are also angled or beveled on both sides. The tooth is literally sharper all around. These teeth are for cross-cutting or cutting wood across the grain. Cross-cutting is more difficult, as I discussed in my wood versus celery video, so you need sharper, less aggressive teeth to sever all the little connections of wood fiber cleanly. And there are more teeth on the cross-cutting side. 
Manufacturers gauge saws by how many teeth they have per inch, TPI. And cross-cutting saws will always have more teeth per inch because, once again, they have more work to do separating fibers. Japanese saws incorporate both of these tooth patterns simultaneously. This gives them a real distinct advantage over Western saws because you get dual purposes out of one tool. The compromise is that many Western style saws have switched over to what they call tri-ground teeth, which are basically teeth that don't slant quite as hard and they cut in both directions. It's meant to be multi-purpose, but the net effect is sometimes that you get a saw that isn't as great for ripping or as great for cross-cutting. Overall though, I do use both of them. I've really come to rely on Japanese saws in fine finish situations because cutting on the pool just gives you tons of control and it's nice to have both tooth patterns available. But if I'm looking to do just a lot of fast, heavy cutting and finish quality isn't quite as important, I'll often prefer a Western saw. That D-grip and the Ford stroke really let you drive with power and you'll get through material fast. They're extremely helpful in situations where you just don't have a power saw nearby. But that's my breakdown on Western saws versus Japanese saws. I'll link good versions of both saws down in the description as well as some others, so feel free to shop those links. As always, thanks for watching. I hope you'll consider subscribing and hit that link for the newsletter sign up too. I've got a lot of good stuff coming up there. I'm Ethan James with TheHonestCarpenter.com. I'll see you next time.